Hello, my name is Tammy, and my husband is the cameraman. And this is Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. Today, we're gonna show you how to make my special hummingbird cake out of our third cookbook. So we're gonna use two cups of sugar, and we're gonna mix it in with all of our wet ingredients. We're gonna add the three eggs, three quarter cups of vegetable oil, an eight ounce can of crushed pineapple, juice and all, two cups of mashed bananas, and last but not least, vanilla. So you're gonna add these ingredients because they're all the wet ingredients with the sugar. You're gonna mix them. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt. This is an easy cake. A teaspoon of cinnamon. And the only thing left is our flour. And so we're gonna be using three cups of flour. I'm gonna go ahead and add one of the cups because we don't put our pecans in until the very end. So we're gonna go ahead and add, matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in two cups and then we'll add one more cup after this blends good. Now we're gonna put in our pecans. I'm gonna get all the flour off of the top of this. Make sure it's all in there. Add our pecans and then all we gotta do is bake our cake. So there's two of y'all. Simple dimple, this is a simple cake. Because of the oil, you don't have to like blend butter and sugar first and then add your eggs one at a time no just throw it all in there pretty much so super easy cake to make some of y'all might want to know when did this hummingbird cake become so popular miss wiggins out of north carolina submitted this recipe that had an oil base with the pineapple and bananas in 1978 and when southern living put it in their magazine it has been the most popular recipe for Southern Living ever since. All right, you're gonna spray your pans, either spray them or grease them and flour them um, with a baking spray. Mama, mommy gets baking spray once she can afford it. <laughs> this is three eight inch layers. I like to use eight inch layers when I do cakes because um, it makes them taller. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try to scoop this out pretty evenly. So we'll start with a scoop. This is a cup scoop. And if you're pretty good at eyeballing it, you can just pour it in each one. Okay, a lot of y'all ask about my mixer. If you will go on our website, coloredvalleycooks.com, go to shop now, then appliances, we're gonna find this mixer, it's a Bosch. It's a little more expensive than a KitchenAid, but it has a very strong motor, and it's a little bit larger capacity bowl than a KitchenAid. It's really good for breads if you like to make bread. All right, so we're gonna slide these in the oven and bake them at 350 degrees. One will be towards the back of the oven, so um, it'll get done quicker, so you need to watch it. So I'm gonna put this lightest color pan in the back because the lighter the color, the less dark it'll turn out, okay? All right, 
right, we're gonna get us a cooling rack out and get our cakes on it, flip them out on some parchment. Let them start cooling down. And I'm actually gonna freeze these today. Once they get to room temperature, I'm gonna freeze them and then we're gonna ice them tomorrow. Ooh, that's hot. You can tell the one in the back got a lot darker than the ones in the front. And one of them in the front was deeper. <laughs> so I did get more batter in one of them. Well, I'm just now taking it out of the oven. And we're gonna let it sit about five or 10 minutes and then we'll flip it out. There's two options for this cake. You can put pecans in the bottom of one of your cake pans before you bake your cake and let that pecan topped cake layer be the top of your cake. When you flip it over, then the pecans will show up. You can let that be the top of your cake or you can make a pineapple topping. If you make a pineapple topping, um, the recipe for the cake layers call for eight ounces. Instead of using a small eight ounce can of pineapple to make the pineapple topping, you use the large can Use eight ounces of it in your cake, and the remaining is what you'd make your pineapple topping with. So we'll do the pineapple topping. So we're gonna start with a half cup of brown sugar. And we're gonna use about 12 ounces of pineapple. And we're gonna cook this down and let it get thick. Okay, so if you use a large can of pineapple, it's 20 ounces. So you've used eight ounces in your cake and the remaining in your topping. Now I didn't do that. I used an eight ounce can of pineapple in the cake. Uh, and you want a little extra than eight ounces for the top of the cake because you want it to um, cover the top layer, especially if you're using a nine inch layer. So all we're doing is cooking this until it gets nice and thick and the liquid's cooked out of it, okay? And then we're gonna use it on the top layer. So you're just gonna combine the brown sugar, the 12 ounces of pineapple, and cook it until most of the liquid is gone. And that way it'll be a nice pretty pineapple top for the top of the cake. First time I made this cake, all I had was a large can of pineapple. Um, when I did the video. So I wanted to use that extra pineapple for something. And I think I just put the, the raw crushed pineapple on top of the cake, but it would taste a lot better if you'd put the sugar in it and do this step and cook it down and then top the cake with it, okay? So it's really like candy in it. It's gonna be really good. And of course, you can omit this step and just ice the cake with cream cheese icing, which is what most people do when they make a hummingbird cake. All right, once that juice starts evaporating, you're gonna be left with a nice pineapple filling, really, is what we're doing. So once all that juice starts evaporating, make sure you use a nonstick to do this. You're gonna be left with just a nice, delicious pineapple sticky topping. And I think it's ready. So once that happens, cook it on high, it's quicker. But if you do, make sure you stand over it, don't let it burn. All right, so we're gonna pour it in this pie plate and that's gonna be the top of our hummingbird cake. It's gonna be really good. So I'm gonna spread it out. We're gonna lay this in the freezer while we make our delicious cream cheese icing. And that way it won't be hot. You don't wanna put it on the cake hot or it'll melt your icing. All right, I'm gonna toast some pecans and we're gonna use these in our icing. And if you toast your pecans, um, toast them while they're whole and then beat them up after that. And that way they'll brown good. Cause if you beat them up first, then the smaller pieces are gonna get burnt before the larger pieces toast. So toast the water whole. And 
and this just makes them really taste good. It really works well with uh, red velvet cake too, or banana bread, or really anything. The the cons that are toasted are just delicious. So put them in your air fryer and cook them 350 degrees, and it should only take about four minutes. As soon as you start to smell them, they should be ready. It's been four minutes and I, and I can't smell them. Now we're just gonna, I'm gonna slide these pecans in the refrigerator so that they're nice and chilled before I put them in my icing, okay? So if you're gonna put anything on icing, you definitely need to have it at least room temperature, not warm. This is cream cheese icing. We're gonna use eight ounces of cream cheese, a stick of room temperature salted butter, vanilla, a little bit of canned evaporated milk, and powdered sugar, all right? And you're gonna start off in your mixer with your cream cheese and your butter, and you're going to use the whisk attachment if you have a whisk attachment in your mixer so that you can get these two combined and really fluffy before you start. You're gonna beat this until it's nice and fluffy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna add some vanilla. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this canned milk. It should only take about a tablespoon at the most. And we're gonna put our powdered sugar in here. I'm gonna start, it's gonna take four and a half cups total. Okay. <laughs> Time to ice the cake. We've got our icing. We got our beautiful cake layers. And if you had put pecans in the bottom of one of the cake pans, when you flip it upside down, then it has pecans all over the top. And you can actually use it uh, for decor, you know, if if you like the way that looks. Um, but now I'm gonna I'm gonna use the pineapple version. So here's our pecans that we toasted. And we're going to take out some really pretty ones to decorate the top of the cake with and the sides. Just a few. And then you're just gonna take the rest of them and we're gonna beat them up and use them around the bottom of our cake. Put this back in here. And that's what we're gonna use. You can break up the larger pieces. They're a lot easier to beat up when they're toasted because they're crunchier. All right, we got some nice cake round. I like to keep a piece of shelf liner that clings to my turntable. And we're going to put just a little icing on this. Now, a hummingbird would love all of the sugar in this pineapple. I've often wondered why it was called a hummingbird cake, and I would imagine because it's got lots of good, sweet nectar from this pineapple. So why not really show off your cake with some beautiful pineapple topping? I'm gonna try to swirl it around a little bit so it doesn't look so staged and flat on the top. So really, all I'm doing is putting a little extra icing around the top. And then I'll swirl the side to make it look pretty. Okay, now we're gonna use our delicious pecans. 
and go around the bottom. And that's what's going to be pretty on the bottom of the cake. You're just going to pick them up, have your cake over what you've got your pecans in, and go ahead and scrape the excess off the bottom and just continue around the cake. And I just don't want to put this on the top because I don't think it's as pretty. And then we're just going to take these pecans and put them on the very top. And there it is, our delicious hummingbird cake. It looks good, good, good. Yummy, yum, yum. Me and Chris are ready to get a piece, aren't we, baby? Oh, yeah. We're going to make us a cup of coffee. Are y'all ready to cut this masterpiece? Now we just put it together, so it's definitely fresh. That's a piece of cake. All right, my favorite part, getting to try the cake. And I'm gonna make sure I get some of this pineapple. Let's grab a little bit of this too while we're at it. tell you this is a masterpiece for real the pineapple topping it just takes this hummingbird cake over the top the hummingbirds would go crazy so you hummingbird lovers that love your hummingbird cake please give my recipe a try and make us a comment and let us know how much you like it all right we'll see you next time on collard valley cooks where we cook like our mamas did bye y'all love ya So go on now.